Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. All of our guests today brought to you by the Waddling Dog a Pub on the Island. The dog is the place to be this sports season, as always. We're just uh, waiting on Elliot Friedman from Hockey Night in Canada and the 32 Thoughts podcast. In the meantime, while we're waiting, Rick, let's update the uh, poll question. Brought to you by Bet99.net. Every game begins at Bet99.net. Canucks opening up their regular season tomorrow at home against the Oilers to Edmonton. Rick. Our Bet99.net poll question. Uh, Rasmus Dallin, eight years, 11 million in Buffalo yesterday. Is that a comparable for Pedersen? 73% say yes, it is. So there you go. I I think everyone knows he's in for a big race. He certainly is... uh, going to be in double digits no question about that yeah uh looks like it and the question for him is does he you know wait uh to, to, for the end of this season to see where where things might yeah. unfold in terms of his point totals and his value to the team can it increase even uh, uh you know from where it is uh today and yeah. uh, or maybe you know you, you bet you, on you, yourself you, Don. yeah you bet on yourself you, you bet on yourself you take a chance your point total could go down and things could change we got elliot okay yeah. Uh, joining us now from Hockey in Canada, the 32 Thoughts podcast, Elliot Friedman. Uh, thank you for doing this, sir. How are you? How you doing, boys? Uh, very well, very well. NHL season 107 is here, uh, Elliot. Uh, mm-hmm. How would you describe the state of the league right now? Uh, you know what? I think uh, coming out of COVID, I think there was uh, there were a lot of problems like a lot of leagues had. Um, you know, I think you're kind of wondering where you're going to go. I think the biggest challenge, you know, the league faces in the short term is the TV situation. Not so much here in Canada yet, uh, but in the United States. Um, you know, find, they think the cap is, the preliminary estimate, the cap's going to be around 87.7 uh, next year. Um I think the one thing they're worried about being a speed bump is some of these regional rights and what happens if they get dropped or they have to find uh, alternate situations for them. Um, You know, I think you can always grow, Don. You can always be better. You can always get more fans. You can always appeal to more people. Um, I think that's kind of the thing we're we're, we're always talking about. Um, More overseas travel, I think, is very important. And committing and not just going to places once, but going to them all the time. Uh, You know, I I think uh, all these things are things that, I mean, you can never stop growing the game. Uh, never stop growing the game. And that's what we're, I think that everybody talks about the most. Uh, we have some Canucks uh, questions for you, and I'll let Rick handle that. But uh, Blackhawks mm-hmm. at Penguins uh, tonight, massive media scrum around uh, Connor Bedard going into that game. Mm-hmm. What, what can Connor Bedard learn from Sidney Crosby about being the face of the National Hockey League, or at least one of them? Well, I think the one thing with Crosby, I think I've always believed that Don, one of the hardest things to do in life is just show up consistently. Uh, I think the most successful people are the people that, you know, they try to keep their emotions as close to that as they possibly can. I think it's too hard to live life up and down like that. And I like the one thing about Crosby is he's been amazingly consistent. He always puts in the work. Um, he always seems to have the same expression on his face. It's very rarely we see him like sometimes on ice, he loses his mind. Like last week when he got into the fight (laughs) with Peyton Krebs, but generally he's a really consistent guy who puts in the work. And I've been really impressed by what I've seen from Bedard so far. Like if you watch those videos and him at practice, he's, he's on the ice before practice. He's on the ice after practice. He makes it very clear. He loves hockey. Um, you know, I, I think those are the kinds of things that you need to be successful. I think the toughest thing, and Crosby talked about this years ago, was the losing. You know, the first few years, his Pittsburgh team wasn't very good, and that was really hard for him to get used to. And Bedard is not exactly set up for team success uh, in the next couple of years in Chicago. Elliot, nobody starts more bonfires on Canucks Twitter than you. Yesterday you got Canucks Twitter uh, going about uh, Pedersen. You said maybe uh, the Canucks might not be so committed to him contract-wise. Can you elaborate? 
Sure. Like, uh, like you know, honestly, Rick, I think there's sometimes I say things where I'm like, this is going to be a fiasco and I'm surprised <laughs> that nothing happens. Then there's other times I say things. I'm like, nobody's going to care about this. And then it turns into a fiasco. Like you just never know yeah. in this day and age what's going to happen. And to be honest, I, I think what I was trying to say is that, you know, you know, Pedersen made it very clear. He wants to see if the team is capable of winning. And I don't have a problem with that. I don't think anybody would have a problem with that. And, you know, I think the Canucks, I, what I was trying to say is that if, if Pedersen's not committed yet, I think the Canucks are basically just preparing for the fact, what if it, cha- what if it doesn't change? And you have to have an alternate plan. Like, I know you've reported today that uh, Pedersen still intends to sign and, and the, the Canucks still want to sign him. And I think all of that is, is, is true. But until it happens, and yep. I, don't, I don't think anybody in Vancouver expects this to be, in the organization, expects this to be a terrible year for the Canucks. But what if it doesn't go right? Right. And what if at the end of the year, Pedersen says, I'm not sure about this. Like, there's a long time between now and then. Yeah. Um, you know, we just have to wait to see how it plays out. But I think it's simply the Canucks saying, okay, we better have an alternate planner mine, or we better be prepared for the fact that something else could happen. I, I don't think it's anything more serious than that. Although I, I should have realized who I was talking to, put it that <laughs> way. Well, there's a, a well, anyways, I'm not going to get into Canucks Twitter. I was getting in trouble like you. Hey, Sean Lafferty, you saw him play in Toronto. What kind of player are the Canucks getting? Sam. Oh, you Sam. Know, huh? Close oh, enough. Close see, look enough. at, look at my close Elliot. Enough. Look what you're doing to me. The extra day off, and now you got me rattled with Canucks Twitter. <laughs> Sam. Sam Lafferty. What are the Canucks getting? Well, I, one thing about Lafferty is he's a, he's a straight line guy. I, I could see why Rick Tocca would want a guy on his roster. He get he goes hard at the puck and uh, he goes fast. He's a he's a very quick player. He's a he's a very hard player. I really liked him when he played in Toronto last year. I mean, he had a career year last year. I don't know if he's going to score that much again, but the fact is he can score, and the fact is he plays hard. And he's a low maintenance guy who competes. And uh, for that reason, you know, the thing I really like about Lafferty is I know a scout that saw him play. I think he played at Princeton and he watched him in, in Princeton. He said, there's no way this guy's going to be in the NHL. And then years later, he saw him in Pittsburgh, actually, and said, I, I can't believe he's here. All credit to him. He's, a- he's got a great work ethic. Uh, he competes hard. And I- like he's one of those guys on your third and fourth line occasionally can play higher um, who just goes out there and say, there's a puck. It's either you or the other guy, and he's going to do whatever he can to get the puck away from the other guy. Sam Lafferty played at Brown. I think Sean Lafferty played at <laughs> uh, Princeton, actually, uh, Elliot. Um, oh, really? Uh, yeah, I'm funny. correcting everybody today because I, I never make a mistake. Hey, Canucks open up against Edmonton uh, tomorrow at Rogers Arena. Mm-hmm. I think most people would agree that a good season for the Canucks, this is what it would look like, a playoff spot. What does a good season for the a successful season for Edmonton look like? Oh, I think the Stanley Cup, Donnie. I, I think they're in it to win it, and uh, – I, I think they're a great team. I think they can win it. I think they've learned some hard lessons along the way. Like they were not capable of beating Colorado two years ago, but they they could have beaten Vegas. That, you know, Vegas earned that series. Yeah. They deserved it, but that was two two after four games, and Edmonton lost it. They felt just as much as Vegas won it. And uh, I think they're good enough to win. I think their best players are demanding of themselves and, and are determined to get better. I mean, obviously, the the key thing is goaltending. I'm I'm very careful about putting too much. Uh, faith in the preseason, but Campbell looked dynamite, and if he can keep anything close to that, they're going to be a tough, tough team to beat. Elliot, as as we let you go here, were you surprised as everybody else about Hellebuck and Shifley uh, yeah. re-upping at Winnipeg? I was not surprised about Hellebuck. I reported that it was trending in that direction. Okay. I was very surprised about Shifley. I did not see that one coming and the other thing about Shifley that's interesting is I think Hellebuck had been trending towards extending for about five or six weeks now okay. I think Hellebuck or Shifley I think it only really got going in the last 10 days and both sides were very serious right away so that's why we are where we are so yes on one not as much on the other I know you're so busy right now Elliot. we thank you so much for making time uh, for us uh, we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks 
All right, I'll see what other brush fires I can do. Okay? <laughs> no, no, we look bon- forward to that. Bonfires, not brush fires, or both, fire. or both, yeah, oh, okay. yeah or both. Bon- <laughs> uh, bonfires. Okay, guys, <laughs> okay. take care. Th- th- thanks, Elliot. Appreciate Elliot's it. the best. He's the best. As we continue our left turns on today's show, a lot uh, going on as we speak. Is it just me? Brought to you by Quinsom Communications Group. Uh, situation with uh, Connor Garland. If we can r- show the tweet from Elliot, if, if you don't mind. Actually, let, let, let's do one better than oh. that. Let's show Elliot. Look at him. Double duty uh, today. I was going to say, I hope I, I hope myself, oh, wait a second, not myself. I hope the Canucks uh, Autism Fund is getting a second fee oh, today. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. The Canucks yeah, absolutely. Children's Foundation. The, uh, let's just pro- uh, promo them first. The, yeah. the Canucks Charities, they do an unbelievable job. What can, you, what can you tell us about uh, Connor Garland, Elliot? Yeah, you know, I, honestly, I wanted to do this. Uh, uh, I wanted to do this uh, before when I was on, but I wasn't able to confirm it at the time. Uh, but uh, Connor Garland and the Vancouver Canucks have reached an understanding that he is able to look for uh, trades with other teams in the NHL to see if there's a, a better fit for him. As you guys know, the Canucks are. Uh, very tight to the cap, and I think this is a situation where they're looking to see if there are other options uh, available to him. And uh, he has a new agent, mm-hmm. uh, Judd Moldaver, who's uh, very aggressive. And uh, he, although he wouldn't comment, uh, I have no. I I think from what I understand and what I was told, he is pretty aggressively calling around to teams and seeing what the potential fits are. Elliot, here's my problem with this. They've been trying to trade Connor Garland for a year and a half. And you were the first guy mm-hmm. to say the Devils were interested, I think, just when Rutherford and Elvin got here. They've been trying for a long, long time. What could possibly change in moving that contract now, Elliot? You know, it's, it's a good question, Rick. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have a great answer for you. Sometimes, you know, the fact that another year comes off the contract can make a difference. Uh, sometimes I, I don't know if the Canucks have changed what they might be willing to do to make it work. Um, but, you know, sometimes you just need to take things with a bit of a different approach. And that's that's kind of the situation here. So do I have anything concrete to answer your question? Rick, no, I don't. But just because you don't have an answer to a question doesn't mean you don't keep trying ways to go at it. Are you see? Is are we going to see more and more of this, Elliot, around the league? Guys that are you know not happy and changing agents and get me out of here. Are are you sensing more and more of that in the in the NHL? I I think the changing agents things. Mm-hmm. You know that, that's a great question, Rick. In the sense of if I actually sat down and put numbers down and talked and see how many people change, would it be more from year to year? It seems to happen more, but that's purely, I don't have any data to back that up, just sort of what's in my head. I think that these are the kinds of cases where it happens more often, where a player is quote unquote stuck and they're trying to find a way out of it or the team's trying to find the way out of it. And as you said, it's sometimes not even the previous agent's fault, uh, Rick. But they just say, you know what, I need someone new to handle things for me. In the meantime, he plays tomorrow night, Elliot, business as usual until something gets done? I, 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 don't, I don't have – the last time we kind of went through this in Vancouver was last year with Besser, right? Yeah. And he yeah. still played. There you go. Yeah, you go. Still and, yeah. and he still played. And things worked out actually really well for him, thankfully. So, I mean, it just goes to show you guys, we, we talked about earlier – you know, the world, we, we want it to go this mm. way. It it, nev- it never goes like yeah. this. It all, it's always going like this. So, yeah. like, things can change. Circumstances change. And you never know. Like, uh, look, Susie got injured the other night. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now I think Vancouver's also looking around on the blue line. You yeah. know, we'll see. But uh, circumstances change. I, I, at this point in time, I have no reason to believe that they're going to sit him out intentionally or to protect no. him or anything like well, that. Well, Elliot, he's got to play, produce if he wants to get out of Vancouver. Uh, you know, put yes. up some numbers. But yeah. also, if if I'm the other guys in that dressing room and I'm sitting there going, this guy's asked for a trade request. Is he on board with us? You know? That's I business. Mean, no, I, I think, you know what, Rick? I, I think guys get it. Like, you know, you take a look at, uh, I mean, locker rooms, like, I, I don't want to say that there's, like, jealousies are in the Canucks organizations. I don't believe that. I'm just talking about yeah. it in general. Like, locker rooms go through these things yeah. all the time. 
Some players uh, are get upset that they're not taken care of. Some players get upset about their role. But generally, I think that people understand that there's a, there's a business aspect yeah. to this. Yeah. And pros are pros. And the other thing too, Rick, it's the beginning of the season. Like these guys, don't you think these guys, like this is the time you're most anxious to play. This, I think, is actually yeah. the best time to put away distractions. Yeah, yeah. get it done now as opposed to, to later when things are, are more important. So, Elliot, one more segment uh, left. Can you join us for the next <laughs> segment? Money can we hey. make it three times? <laughs> <laughs> we've, I don't think your audience wants that, requests it, or can handle uh, it. You'd be, you'd be wrong. Uh, we appreciate it, Elliot. we got to run. Thank you so much twice today. Can't get enough. All right, guys. You, you, the, the, the best, best there is, Elliot. Drop the puck.